Shane Boz was awesome in his debut, plus we have some last-second waiver ads next on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT in 5. As always, make sure to follow and stream us on Spotify. Today is Wednesday, September 22nd. I am Frank Stanfield, joined by Scott White. Let's talk about that Shane Boz debut up against the Toronto Blue Jays. Five innings, two runs, five strikeouts. He had 15 swinging strikes on 65 pitches through three different pitches. A good amount of time in this start, Scott. Is he, let's say you play in a daily lineup league. There is now a chance that he starts this weekend. Do you think Shane Boz should be a must-add in leagues like that? Well, the outing would be against the Marlins. So if it does happen, I mean, you can't ask for a better matchup than that. Uh, you can't really ask for a better performance than the one he gave against the Blue Jays, a much better lineup. You know, I, I don't think it was realistic to expect him to go six innings or more because he only went six innings once in the minors and the Rays tend to tend to treat young pitchers with kid gloves anyway. Um, but he did as well as he could do in his five innings. He got a win out of it. Struck out five, but as you mentioned, a ton of swinging strikes. You can certainly see him getting more strikeouts against a team like the Marlins because the stuff was great. I mean, rising fastball, he was getting hitters to swing under it. The slider was responsible for 10 of the 15 swinging strikes. Like, he looked really, really nasty. So, yeah, I mean, I could see picking him up for that Marlins start. Again, you just have to realize quality start is probably off the table, and so that limits the amount of impact he could have but he should be good with the innings he gets. If if that ends up happening, it's still unclear whether or not they insert another six guy in the rotation, but it's possible now he could get that second start. Let's take a look at some hitters. Where should we add these names, if anywhere? I'll give you a name, Scott, and you tell me uh, what league size, maybe what format you'd be looking to add this player. Lane Thomas, two for four with another home run on Monday. He's 25% rostered, has been awesome since joining the Washington Nationals, and... He has six games next week. Three of those are in Coors Field. What do you think about Lane Thomas? Yeah, I, I think he's an okay desperation play in a three outfielder league and, and more than that in a five outfielder league with those matchups with the kind of performance he's turned in in September. What about his teammate? Cabert Ruiz has five hits and five RBI over his last two games. Just mentioned those matchups, three of those games in Coors Field. He's 32% rostered. Is he a catcher that you would look to stream in a one catcher league next week? Well, he hasn't been getting the batting average up there with four multi-hit games and five. Only one of the hits has been an extra base hit, a double. So, you know, I him versus somebody like Dalton Varsho or Alejandro, Alejandro Kirk or even like Elias Diaz. I, I'd probably lean with those other guys instead of Ruiz, but k Ruiz in like a two-catcher league seems fine. Jesus Sanchez hit another home run on Monday. He now has seven home runs in 18 September games. He is 34% rostered. Looks like he has seven games next week. What do you think about Jesus Sanchez? The matchups might be difficult in those seven games, going against two tough pitching staffs, or at least starting rotations, uh, Phillies and Mets. But, yeah, I mean, he's gotten the OPS over 800 for the year, a lot of power recently. Uh, I, I still see Jesus Sanchez is probably is more of a five outfielder play than three outfielder. All right, last name here, Yoshi Sutsugo, uh, now has eight home runs in 32 games with the Pittsburgh Pirates. He's been great with them, 7% rostered. He has six home games next week against the Reds and the Cubs. Yeah, he's he might be the most interesting one, in fact. It's close between him and Lane Thomas, but Sutsugo has been of the names you mentioned, he has the best numbers, what he's done with the pirates. And it's really been overlooked how productive he's been. Scott, you wrote an article recently that is live on CBS sports.com pitchers to stash for the final week of the season. And the top three pitchers on that list include Joe Ryan, who is 44% rostered. He has two starts next week. Jordan Montgomery, 80% rostered has two starts next week. And then Alex Cobb is only 29% rostered and at the Texas Rangers, which is a great matchup. Uh, talk more about those names, and would you drop someone like Carlos Rodon for all three? I would drop Carlos Rodon for all three because of what's everything that's going on with Rodon. Uh, he's really having his pitch count limited. No chance he goes the six needed for a quality start, I don't think. And he's had some velocity issues on top of it. Seems to be dealing with soreness of some kind. So 
I can't really see myself using Rodon. But these three, I mean, Joe Ryan's matchups are against the Tigers and at the Royals, two great matchups. And the Twins really haven't treated him with kids' gloves. He's already had a seven-inning start since getting called up, hardly allowed any hits, seems to be doing the same sorts of things he was in the minors. So love him with those two matchups. Jordan Montgomery, I think, has been an undervalued option all year, even with difficult matchups against the Blue Jays and Rays. I I think you got to put him out there for two starts in the final week. And Alex Cobb, uh, I believe his XFIP is 316. His splitter's been so effective this year. He spent some time on the IL, obviously, but really underappreciated how good he's been. He was He's going against the Astros this week and still building up his second start back from the IL, so it made sense he didn't want to use him this week. But next week at Texas, having been built up more, I think Alex Cobb's going to be a good play. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, your smart speakers, or anywhere else podcasts are found. And thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. If you enjoyed the pod, please leave a five-star review on Apple. We'll be back again on Friday morning. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.